continue my trouble. Yeah? You just at home sometimes you sit only five minutes and then you think of many other things. Uh, think of yesterday and today things and even tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and one do this, one to do that. Oh, very difficult to settle down. Yeah? But here, you feel more settled down? Yes. After you sit for a while, the mind gets tired and leaves you alone. <laughs> Truly. And you feel good, you feel comfortable, no? Yes. 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 You have to truly concentrate on your practice because you came from far away. I appreciate that. But I hope you do appreciate your effort. I appreciate your effort. Yes, that you came from far away and you put down everything and your job and sometimes have to arrange difficult situations to come here. I appreciate that. But you must appreciate yourself. You must know that this time here is precious for you. Just meditate, five names, sit, eat and go back, sit. When you come here, when you sit in meditation, you must know the time is precious. The time is just for you. Twenty-four hours, you have only two or three hours, and even if you have it. Sometimes you don't have. And then during that two, three hours, you think all kind of nonsense already. So you have only maybe five minutes, ten minutes, truly concentration. So when you come here, it's easier. Yeah? Try, really try to sit and meditate and concentrate. Whenever you forget to concentrate, you pull it back again. Yeah. Whenever your mind thinks something bad, negative, or not conducive to meditation, you pull it back again. That's how we get the habit going, you see? The good habit. Because we had bad habit all this life already. Not just this life, many lifetimes already. Collecting all the bad habit and in the DNA also, when we were born. That's why in the Christian they say we have a sin from the ancestors, the DNA, the gene. Yeah? We're born with it. And then when we grow up, we collect more from the society, from the environment. Yeah? Mostly bad things. <laughs> so when we come here, try to train again. Yeah? For three, four days, one week. Yeah? Try to train the mind to sit still. Not the body, the mind. But at least if your body sits still, maybe your mind slowly gets tired. He tries to move you and then he's tired. And then later on, you get used to it. And after a while, you settle down. That's why we have to sit a little longer in order to settle down. Even the same with sleeping. When you're in bed, you don't always immediately feel good, no? After a while, oh, comfortable. Huh? Same with meditation. Now, I can only offer you some theory either from the past master, present master, or from uh, my own experience. But you are the one who has to assimilate it, and digest it, and make use of it. You know, just like you eat food, assimilate it, digest it, and then it becomes energy for you to move around. Similarly, the spiritual food offered to you, you must digest it and use it yourself. Now we... We go back to the series Tao Te Ching. Hmm? This is one of the nice uh, stanzas about humility. Who knows his manhood's strength, yet still his female feebleness maintains. As to one channel flow the many drains, or come to him, or beneath the sky. Thus, he the constant excellence retains, the simple child again, free from all stains. Who knows how white attracts, yet always keeps himself within black's shade. The pattern of humility Display in view of all beneath the sky, he in the unchanging excellence array, endless return to man's first state has made. Who knows how glory shines, yet loves disgrace, nor ever for it is pale. Behold his presence in a spacious veil, to which men come from all beneath the sky. 
The unchanging excellence completes its tale. The simple infant man in him we hail. This is about simplicity and humility. In the beginning, it says something like, "Okay, who knows his manhood strength? Yet still his female feebleness maintain. As to one channel flow the many drains, all come to him, all beneath the sky. Thus he." The constant excellence retains the simple child again, free from all stains. Now let's check it out. A person who is very strong, for example, a man who knows that he has muscle and strength, but still he is gentle, like a feminine counterpart. He doesn't use his muscle. To threaten others, this is just physically speaking. He doesn't display his powers, yeah, just to impress anyone. On the contrary, he is gentle, yes, and uh, sweet, as if he has some feminine quality in him. Actually, we all have some quality of female and male within us. In some. Have more male quality dominates, then we call that a man. In some more feminine quality dominates, we call her a woman. We were talking about a guy who has muscle and strength and the tendency of the primate, <laughs> and he still use not his strength, but his tenderness. Uh huh. Then. This man is like a great channel to which all the drain flow into it. So it's like this man will gather all the other beings under the sky. That means all beings will come to him. That is the status of the master. Not necessarily that he. Became a master, busy like famous master or official, and not necessary. He just attract people, or beings. You know, maybe even animals come to him because they feel the love from that person, the tenderness, the true quality of human. Be it a man or woman. Here they say man, but it's not necessary. It's a man. Some woman also very muscular and very strong. You know, it's not necessary physical, but. It's just a symbol. Thank you for your company today for Between Master and Disciples here on Supreme Master Television. Please tune in tomorrow for part three of this discussion of Lao Tzu's teachings with Supreme Master Ching Hai. And now, healthy living is up next, right after noteworthy news. Farewell and heaven bless.